I finished the last video sort of ending. It seemed too long, so this is the part 2.2. Let's get to the budget system I'm building right away. Since I'm building a budget iFi system, I don't want class A amplifier. First, they're too expensive to get, and second, they consume so much power. My electricity bill can increase substantially, and that's not very cost effective in the long run. Pretty much the same goes for power amps. They are expensive and almost always need a preamp to control the volume, and that's another unwanted expense. Class D amplifiers are very power efficient, powerful and can be quite cheap. While I don't fancy the sound, they are too cold and harsh, so I'm looking for Class AB integrated amplifier. Next I'm gonna connect a turntable, so I need an amplifier that's able to do that, that means it must include a phono preamp. Sure, I can get a separate phono preamp, but again, I'm building a budget system and standalone phono preamps are additional unnecessary expense, so I have to look for an amplifier with phono preamp already built in. Another thing is, if I'd want to get a different turntable or a different cartridge in the future, I want to be sure I can use any turntable or cartridge. That's why the amplifier should have the ability to switch between MM and MC cartridges. Then we need inputs for CD, cassette deck, reel-to-reel -reel deck and digital-to-analog converter. My favorite VFA terms are out of the question. Even though they're exceptional performers, they are quite rare and also too expensive for the budget system. So we need to find something that's very good, that's not expensive but not that cheap, that's easy to maintain and in case of some sort of malfunction of any part, easy and cheap to replace. That being said, valve amplifier is out of the question as well. Not only are they usually expensive, but the valves themselves need to be replaced regularly for optimum performance. So, I need some older transistor amp, but it shouldn't be too old, cause the first transistor units weren't very good. There are literally millions of amplifiers out there, and it's pretty much impossible to have tested them all, so I need to rely on my experience when choosing the gear for this video. I've chosen a couple of candidates for this project. And while I was looking for Sony TA300 online, I stumbled upon this beauty. They're usually listed for £300 and more, so I brushed the idea of buying this one off, but then I realized it's a bloody auction and it starts at 60 quid. So I tried to bid on that, and guess what? I was the only bidder. I was dead chuffed, it was almost free. The FA3ES was made in 1995, so it's fairly new. It was Sony's own product at the time, together with more powerful FA5ES and FA7ES. Even though it was science, it wasn't top of the line. It cost about £1,000 in 1995, which is about 2200 a day, or about 2600 in US dollars. It was sold for the price with a loss only to promote Esprit range. Whether or not was the promotion successful, Sony created an astonishing piece of hardware, which we can enjoy for a fraction of the price today. The FA3S uses MOSFET transistors, which are usually used in iron gear, which it is, or at least it used to be back in 1995. The power output is 70 watts per channel in 2A terms. It should be powerful enough for most home loudspeakers and certainly for those I've chosen for the system. She's in an excellent condition, everything's working fine, nothing's knackered or wobbly. When I took her apart, I found out she's in her original state, nothing's been replaced or fixed. Build quality is simply worthy of Sony's iron. But how does she sound to ask? I turned her on, nothing blew up, nothing smelled funny, so I let her sit turned on for a while. After an hour or so, I played some music. When I heard the first tones coming out of the speakers, boy was I gobsmacked. I couldn't believe the sound was so clear, detailed and spacious. That being said, compared to the Sony TN7 or the Yamaha B3, it sounded a little bit dull, less detailed and less spacey. But I'm comparing the FA3S with two of the best amplifiers out there, of course there will be a massive difference, but less massive than I thought there will. She sounds so bloody amazing you can hardly find anything better today for the price, and what's quite embarrassing for the modern amps that is, she sounds better than lots of today's science amps. That's how good she is. 